so now it's time to meet up and get to know the she um and their research wing i suppose and the emperor themselves um we already met up with this guy we retrieved the spleen from him to save chip on the on the pmv valdez which is good so let's just talk to him like a normal person instead of accusing him of being about to eat a human spleen. He asks, may I assist you with something? Who are you? He says, I'm Dr. Wong. I'm the head the scientist of this installation. Oh, more questions, please. Uh, what do you do here? He replies, I oversee the scientific experiments we create and run here. I also am in charge of the computer network. Oh, what are you planning? He says, ah, but if I tell you our plans, then everyone will know. I'm afraid they are secret plans for now. Okay, I have some other questions. What do you do here? Um, how does one access the computer network? He says, why one learns how to hack into it or how to make friends with one of my underlings. I'm joking, of course, but yeah, about hacking into it, if you were to do that, I'd send someone after you to kill you. He smiles to show that he means no offense. So you wouldn't have any real objections to me getting into the computer? He says, if you can convince my subordinates into doing so, but I certainly won't. Uh, okay, I see. So long. Okay, let's speak to some subordinates then, shall we? Mix this, mix that. I get so bored sometimes, okay. Uh, we'll change the wasteland with this experiment. Like what, though? What, what are we, what are we changing? What are we doing? Are we doing some amazing, like, research into maybe reverse reversing the mutations of the FEV in the wasteland, maybe? It says the station is deactivated. Let's activate it. It says, greetings, please enter your password to confirm your identity. Uh, hack it. Ah, chemistry database. Fuel and derivatives. Polymers. Okay, how about fuel and derivatives? It says you come across a vast array of complex chemical formulae and lab notes. You're not quite sure what it all means. I can just direct fuel to the Poseidon oil tanker like this. Um, I don't know if that ends up making them hostile against me, though, but I'm going to do it anyway. Fuel directed accordingly. Storage tanks, empty. Closing program, done. Is that really all I had to do? Just keep moving along. Uh, <laughs> is that really all I had to do? <laughs> Did I just fuel the tanker? No problem, because I have a godly science skill. I think I did. Okay, well, I don't think there's anything in these tables either. I'm going to talk to some of these scientists, though. Because I do still want to speak to the Emperor. Because as you can see, the Emperor... The Emperor's throne is here, but the Emperor is not in the house, as it were. So, let's speak to... For the glory of the Emperor. Right. Aggressive supporters, I see. Let's talk to this man. Who are you and what do you want? Uh, I'm Kato. Just looking around. He says, well, Kato, do you actually have business here? Uh, I would like to know what you do here, actually. The man says, I create compounds and devices for the Emperor and for the Emperor's advisor, Ken Lee. Currently, I'm working on fuel derivatives and polymers that will withstand massive attack. Of course, this is of no interest to you since it is, for the most part, theoretical. Uh, not yet it's not, but I'll be back. Yeah, I already, I already took, I already took the fuel. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I already took it. Okay. Well, let's see if we can talk to the guy. Let's talk to this guy. He's probably just generic. Yeah. Work, work, work. That's all we're good for. These poor scientists. I like how they do have the, the red and blue she guards in here still. All right. This must be Ken Lee, a stocky she man who... Looks like he's full of knowledge. Is he a big brain? He says, what can I do for you? Who are you? He says, I am Ken Lee. I am the advisor to the Emperor of the Shi. I bring forth the wisdom of the Emperor. And who are you? I am Kato. I would like to see the Emperor. He says, not everyone is granted a chance to see the Emperor. You must first prove your worth. Are you willing to prove yours? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I am. Ken Lee replies, excellent. This is what I require of you. There is a small military base north of here called Navarro. There are numerous vertebrates there. We need plans and blueprints to manufacture some of our own. Fetch those, and you will be on your way to seeing the Emperor. You got it. He stops me. Once you have obtained the vertebrate plans, give them to Dr. Wong. He will put them to good use. 
Okay, bye. All right. So another quest that is that is leading us towards Navarro. I don't think there's anything else really to do in here. And I've already stolen the fuel. <laughs> but they're none the wiser because I'm just that good of a hacker man at this point. Thank you, Skydet side quest, for forcing me to raise my science to ridiculous amounts. For anybody else who wasn't paying attention, my science is my second highest skill right underneath my unarmed skill. It's at 123, and my unarmed is at 142. I am a super scientist who is also super punchy. Okay, that's not... That's not Dr. Wong, is it? Dr. Fung, okay. Maybe... I should go get to know the homologists a little bit too then. Since we're here, um, and they may send us on a very similar mission, because that's kind of where where the choices happen here in San Fran, is establishing... Oh yeah, they have a spaceship. They, they have an actual spaceship in Fallout 2 um, that they plan to take to the stars. And we get to actually see it. Who's the scientist out here? Who are you? He says, hey, raw meat, who are you? What are you doing here? Um, I'm Kato, just looking around. He says, you're not one of the brethren, and you are therefore not authorized to be here, unless you're planning on joining us, which you may do by expressing your interest to AHS-7, who is at the guard post. Now, either get downstairs or get out of here. Fine, fine, no need to be testy. My goodness. Is that how you all are? All you hobologists? So down here, this guy... Right here at the stairs must be AHS-7. Obviously, I can't go any further unless I speak to him. Because they're... I mean, I can if I start shooting my way in or punching my way in. I know Marcus would be down for that, but mm, not so much. Let's not do that yet. They say, you, state your business. Um, I'm interested... Uh, to, who are you first? They reply, I am AHS-7, second in command of this facility. Before you ask, AHS stands for Aligned Hub Seeker, which means that I have cleared seven levels of Neurodynes from my spirit. This means that I am more enlightened and closer to the hub of the Great Wheel than you. And this means that you will tell me what you want here, now. Aligned Hub Seeker. AHS is Aligned Hub Seeker. Um, I am interested in potentially joining your group. He says, excellent, go in, go in. Speak with Juan Cruz and Vicky Goldman. They're celebrities, you know, but they'll talk to you. Who are they? He says, they're stars from New Reno. They heard the truth behind the gospel and came to cleanse their neurodynes. Where do I find them? HS7 replies, you can find them in the prayer room. All our new recruits and the raw meat, just how rewarding it is to be a herbologist. Well, let me at them. Okay. Starfather cares for you. That's why he gave you us. Oh my goodness, they're so friendly to me already. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go, we're gonna go learn, <laughs> learn what it means to be a hobologist. I don't know if there's actually, like, many things of value in here. They very much take up the monk life when it comes to belongings. There's a fruit in this chest. What's in this one? A flower. Yeah, th there's just garbage. It's probably just garbage in all these footlockers. Will that stop me from trying to loot them all? Probably not. Oh, there's a flare. That's actually worth money. Okay. <laughs> a little bit of money. We're not, we're not really at that point where we're desperate for money as much. Especially because all the, all the firearms we have stashed back at home. I will pick up these flares though. So I guess, I guess it is, I guess this is what we're doing. Topoyo, I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it properly this time, 67. Hey Kato, what if you make a playlist of funny encounters with low intelligence? Um, that's very specific, but I was toying around with a low intelligence character just a little bit. Um, and one thing that needs to be stated is that a whole lot of the game is just locked off from you and can become boring really quickly because you're unable to do a lot of quests and hire a lot of companions and just you're locked out of huge amounts of the game um so for the short amount of time that you or the short bits of really entertaining dialogue that you do get like um well tor for example in klamath when you first arrive in klamath he's the one you have an actually intelligent conversation with in parentheses which is 
absolutely hilarious because the intelligence of your characters matches up. If I were to do something like that, it would have to be um, phrased in such a way that would actually get people interested, like 10 best responses to a dumb character in Fallout or uh, the most hilarious dialogue that you've probably missed. Uh, that's kind of where it would go if I decided to do something like that, but that's not in the cards right now, I don't think. Um, but thank you for the question, nonetheless. Did you like that? Wasn't that enjoyable? Like a full minute of just, like, Kato looting footlockers? Oh, hey. <laughs> More flares. Maybe I'll get an eyeball crit. Maybe I'll have another chance to get an eyeball crit on something. Wouldn't that be fun? All right, let's meet these celebrities. There is a there is a mess hall in here, too. I'm tempted. OK, I like being apologists. I'm still learning the lingo to tell the truth. Only the hub and HS9 have the answer. Oh, man, that's cult talk. Real science is all a pack of lies. Ah, here we go. Here we go. This is where the jokes are coming from. Greetings, new recruits. I'm Vicky Goldman. And I'm Juan Cruz. We're celebrities, as you already know. Marcus, get off the stage. <laughs> we think apology is the way to go. <laughs> we know apology is the way to go. I can fry bugs with my brain power. I look good in tinfoil hats. Maybe if you work hard at optimizing yourself, you can associate with us. We'd certainly like that. Yes, we're always looking for friends. As long as they are willing to optimize themselves and are as high ranking as we are. We're AHS5. You can be AHS5 someday. If you donate lots of money, you can be AHS5 even faster. But don't think we want you for the money. No, we want to help you. And that's what Hubology is all about. Yay! There's applause <laughs> in the log. That's funny. Okay. Massive jab at Scientology. So apologies to any Scientologists who are watching the Let's Play. Huge jab. <laughs> You'll never guess what kind of celebrities. An eerily wholesome couple. You'll never guess what kind of celebrities these are anyway. Let's talk to Juan. Oh boy, I have to I have to narrate both of them. Him. Hi, I'm Juan Cruz. Her. And I'm Vicky Goldman. Both. We're celebrities, and we endorse Hubology. Both. Please note that any similarities between us and people or institutions, living or dead, is entirely coincidental. Celebrities. What makes you celebrities? Her. Why, we're in the movie business in New Reno. We made hundreds of films, many of them classics, like Top Bun, Frisky Business, and Days of Rubber. That's what makes us celebrities. Well, it's nice to put faces to the names. Vicky and Juan. Her blank icy look. Him. Thank you. Er, I have some questions. He says, more questions than we have answers, provided by the Great Wheel's graces, of course. How do I join him? Well, it's very simple. We just give you this informational holodisc. Her. You sit through a short movie. Him. Then <laughs> you go and talk to HS7. Her. Easy, isn't it? Oh my goodness. I feel so bad for the person who had to punctuate this. Or like make this out to look like two people talking at once. Let's do it. I just had my indoctrination training. Uh, her. It wasn't so bad, was it? Him. Now, just talk to AHS7 and we'll be comrades in Hubology. Her. Oh, I'm so excited. Him. Getting new recruits makes me so excited. And they are, like, all over each other making out and stuff. You, you, you understand. You know. You know what kind of celebrities these are. They're from New Reno, of all places. Where do you think the cameras are in New Reno? Okay. I got the Hubology holodisc. Downloaded it. Weighs one pound. Let's learn, let's learn about Hubology, shall we? Let's see what kind of nonsense is going on here. Oh my lord, it's seven pages. Hubologist teachings, one of seven. Welcome. Welcome to the Hubology Holodisc. Within these electronic pages, you'll find a quick description of our beliefs, including the formerly repressed teachings of the Hub. This Holodisc isn't meant to represent our the final word on Hubology. Think of it as a primer and us as your spiritual guardians. 
let's begin with the history. We were founded back before the Great Deluge by an author and visionary of the Great Promise, a man named Dick Hubble. He saw the failure of medicine of that time and the failure of religion and of the failure of government. He knew that the world needed something new. The world needed Hubology. Inspired by music of the time and his own personal experience with extraterrestrial beings, he set out to show us the wheels in the sky, to keep them burning, and to understand the great wheel of life. We call him the Hub, for it is through him that we understand our place in the wheel. He is our center, and we are his spokes. It is around his teachings that we revolve. With the publication of countless books and journals, the Hub began spreading the word of Hubology, and immediately became a target for his detractors. They called his work pseudoscience and dangerous dribble that can only hurt its adherents. Despite the collected sightings of extraterrestrial vehicles across the globe, they insisted on quashing the Hub's word. We know that they were simply stupid and misguided, but they were powerful. They included governments and corporations and other such entities, keeping the greatest news of all time from the people of the Earth. Hubology was driven underground for a time, marshalling its forces against the attacks of those who envied its simplicity and ease of use for the common man. When at last the Hubologists of that time struck back, they did it in such a way that few could stand against them. They infiltrated the organizations that sought to destroy them and created television shows that sought to expose the lies the government had fed to the people. This caused a subtle backlash against our religion. The common man found reason to doubt Hubology because of the distorted teachings of the media, and we had to wage a long campaign against those who would call us crackpots. During this time, sadly, the Great Hub passed away. Bolstered by the knowledge that the Hub had achieved unity with the Star Father, helping to turn the cosmic wheel in our direction, attaining another level of consciousness, we remained confident in ourselves that ours was the true way. Along the way, we gained adherents, many of whom who simply wanted to believe that there was a place out there that is better than this world. We offer proof of life on other planets and philosophy that allows us to understand the way of the universe. People have come to us over the ages impressed by the rightness of our minds, and the fact that we have survived the Great Deluge unscathed teaches us that the Great Wheel turns toward our teachings. Philosophy Hubology contains a simple philosophy, cold from the finest religious and philosophical minds of the pre-deluge Earth. We believe that life, the universe, and everything can best be symbolized by a turning wheel. The outer rim of the wheel contains those who do not understand our teachings, and who do not understand the truth. We call them rim meat, for the wheel turns over them and grinds them, and they do not appreciate its workings. Those who practice Hubology are the spokes of the wheel. We understand the motion of the wheel and do our best to facilitate its turning. Those who control a portion of the wheel are called hubs. And as far as we know, there have been only a few hubs, enlightened individuals, who seek to better the lots of their fellow earthlings. We refer to the founder of Hubology as the hub, for he is the one with the most correct teaching. In the practice of our religion, we simply apply scientific techniques developed by the hub and perfected by his inheritors to align the flawed neurodynes that create disharmony and an asymmetrical wheel. This allows us to purify ourselves and prepare us for self-examination. It is only through self-examination that we are able to succeed, and only through self-examination that we understand our place in the cosmos and on the great wheel. It is only through self-examination that we discover ourselves to be worthy of boarding the fiery rings when they meet us on the planet Quetzal. We think of ourselves as a religion combined with the best scientific technique. Scientific spirituality is what we call it, and what we hope you'll be calling it before too long. Okay, now we're moving on to the creation story. Aeons ago, all lived peacefully and in harmony with one another. Body, mind, and spirit were joined in all creatures, and the technology that existed boggled the imaginations. It was a time of peace, creativity, and alignment. And then the dark days came. The Rakazog, the pothole, began to teach mind-body dualism, and the sundering of the spirit and war arose. The Great War destroyed souls and bodies and scattered their remnants across the universe. The Great Wheel came close to separating from the axle of existence, its spokes broken in the rut Therakazog had created. A new life had to arise. And arise it did. On the planet Terra, 
as on other planets across the universe. We focus mainly on the life that arose on Terra. For while we believe that we will once again heal the sundered spokes of the wheel with our starry brothers, we must first concentrate on making ourselves useful spokes. This new life was polluted by the soul pieces of the dead. This led to hate and misunderstanding, and wars raged across Terra's surface, until one day a visionary realized that the only way to create peace, understanding, and enlightenment was to cleanse these soul pieces from the spirits of humanity. That vision was the hub. His cleansing continues today. Bibliography. Books by the hub. There are hundreds and hundreds of books listed here, including such titles as Scientific Spirituality, Battleground Quetzal, Starfather Above, Collected Shopping Lists, Notes and Musings, How to Sue Your Enemies Effectively, How to Create a Cult, and Future Books to be Written When I'm Dead. <laughs> wow! Which makes this whole thing a joke and a jab towards Scientology, but at the same time, because the Zetans do exist inside of Fallout, it also puts a little tiny, like, twinge of, cr of truth on it because they exist. Um, because aliens are a part of, of this. So there is a level of, of alien, at least, appreciation and worship, but it may be one of those situations where where... It's, it's like the peace and love kind of approach where we know from like Mothership's Aid and stuff like that, they are definitely like hyper aggressive, will try to kill you or or probe you or turn you into an experiment. At least that's the direction it kind of went. Um, so what an ordeal. Um, I probably, because of how long that was, I probably did a few encounters, like left and did a few encounters. Yeah, okay, I'm back. I'm back at AHS 7. And we're gonna maybe actually join up. Yes, yes, yes. You may have the run of the compound. Oh, you're a person who knows how to use a weapon. Would you care to use yours in service of the Great Wheel? Sure. He says the de facto leader of the tanker variants is a piece of anti therapeutic raw meat named Badger. With his death, they will come to understand our position. Will you remove him? Uh, I'll do it. Let us know when you've completed your task. Sure thing. A special thanks to those supporting me on Patreon, including Wasteland Legends Sven and David Hoover. You can catch future episodes of this playthrough on Wednesdays and Fridays, noon and 10 a.m. Pacific. Thanks so very much for watching. I'm Kato Genesis, and may you wander the wasteland like you own it.